I had this time in my life where it just kept happening and happening and happening, and it really picked up for a couple years. I started to live in denial that it was even happening. I said, you know, I'm, I want to see. I looked up, and they started to lift me towards this just enormous craft. It was terrifying. And they're doing something to me. It's not something that's in my head at all. It's, it's real. It's happening. Take from this what you will. This does happen to me. It has been happening to me all my life. And you don't have to believe because I know the truth. My earliest memories of being abducted by aliens were when I was very young, five, six years old. I was living in, in Ohio, and it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. Our nearest neighbor was a mile or two away. There was you know, nothing for miles. I would be in my bed, usually. I would hear voices coming down the hallway. The voices were of my parents, so I got comfortable thinking it was my parents. I remember seeing a bright blue light come under the door and shadows, actually, of something standing outside the door. And I realized that it was not my parents coming in. When they got close, I'd see those black almond-shaped eyes just staring right at me. Emotionless eyes just looking at me and they would extend their hand and I would grab it as if I was really comfortable with them and had done this many times before. And uh, they often would let me take my favorite stuffed animal with me. As a child, I didn't realize that these beings didn't visit everybody at night. I thought when people went to bed, the bald men would come for everybody. And it was just a normal thing. I decided I would, you know, draw them and write down things that I could remember. I was always into art, so I really started to try to draw them as best as I could. It's me. What about George? The bald man. What bald man? They're my friends. They come visit me at night. It didn't start to get uncomfortable until I started talking about the bald men to other people, whether it be classmates or family members, and they just said that it's not real, there's no such thing, you're just dreaming. It was very frustrating being told that this wasn't happening when I knew it was. OK, Audrey, I need you to relax. As an adult, I would remember bits and pieces. I'd remember them coming in. I remember them doing something to me so I couldn't move. I remember them bringing me somewhere else and being other places. But the things I didn't remember were, you know, what were they doing to me when they took me? And I said, OK, I need to find people that could maybe help me. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Regression was a great tool to bring back the missing pieces, the memories. We're going to focus on a room. Didn't even think about it, didn't get educated on it, said, OK, I'm going to get hypnotized, let's do it. I just want to get to the bottom of this. It's a basement. You're going to walk down the stairs. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, this isn't going to work. You know, those memories are gone. I'm never going to remember what's happening. I didn't know anything about it. I had no idea what I was in for. Three, two, one. Audrey, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. What you see. My first hypnosis session was the most traumatic experience that I think I've ever had in my life. I wasn't ready, I think, to, to see what they were doing. I wasn't ready to accept it. The bald men were just terrifying to look at. 
the people that wanted to help me, you know, they did this wonderful hypnosis session. They got all this, you know, detailed accounts of what's going on, and this was great stuff. But I never came back for a long time. I just left. I didn't want to think about it. They gave me a copy of the tape. I never listened to it to this day. Um, I try to forget. And I just ran from it for a long time. I started to live in denial that it was even happening until they came for me. I was just getting ready to go to bed. My window was open, and all of a sudden, I started hearing the shade flapping. And so I was sitting there, and I had the feeling that they were coming. The, it, I call it the heebie-jeebies. I get it. And it, it's like a pure state of panic, anxiety, but at the same time, almost like I feel like I'm magnetically attracting something to me. I just, I can't explain it, but it is some kind of attraction. I got under the covers like I had as a child for so many years, thinking that that would help. And I don't know, something kind of snapped inside me, and I said, you know, I'm, I want to see what's coming and what has been coming for me for so long. So I didn't hide under my covers this time. And as I sat there waiting, after the wind came the lights and um, the humming sound. Once the light came into my window, I knew that it wouldn't be long. I started to feel uh, a twitching in my body and, and my arms moving by themselves, like muscle spasms almost. And then buzzing sounds, real steady. It was a, a kind of fear I can't even explain. Total confusion, anger, what are they doing? And then, of course, why? Why? I tried to scream so somebody could hear me and, and maybe help me, and I couldn't. There was no sound that would come out. For some reason, I started to like say, I'm going to fight this. I'm not letting them take me. As I grabbed him, I heard in my head, watch out for the mother. And then I let go. I felt something stick me, and it was a burning sensation instantly to a point where if I moved any muscle, it was like my whole body was on fire. It's weird because they kind of position you the way they want, almost like they can do it with their mind. Once you can't move, they can move you. So as I was levitated off the bed, and I could feel myself moving straight ahead. And I knew straight ahead, my dresser was there with a mirror and it's backed up against the wall. I realized that I was going right through it and I could see my feet go right through the mirror. I uh, realized that I'm outside and it was really, really bright. I looked up and, and I saw the ship lights and I, they started to lift me towards this just enormous craft above my house. It was terrifying, confusing, you know, surreal. Like, this can't be happening to me. And uh, I went close to the ship. And that was the last thing I remember. And then I just blacked out. All of a sudden, I, I was awake and aware. I uh, noticed a man walking around me. And I looked at him, and he looked at me. He felt familiar to me for some reason. He touched me and was no longer a man. At this point, I asked it. And when I say asked, the, it's completely telepathic. Can you somehow know who it's coming from, and even if there's a group of them? Finally, I asked, you know, after all these years, why are you doing this to me? And he said that they were working on altering my DNA. When he was talking to me, he actually cared. And that was a feeling that was really confusing because, of course, you know, if you care, why do you abuse me? If you care, why are you doing this? But then I got to ask him, and he said what he was doing. This was like a breakthrough. I got to talk to him, and, and you know, it's been years. It's almost like that first question that I got to ask was just the beginning. 
There was a, a machine. It was strange looking, but I knew it was some kind of a clock. And it was counting backwards. I heard the words war and then just blacked out completely. And that's all I remember until, uh, you know, I woke up at some point. I don't know how long it was, but I regained consciousness. I'm still on the table. And they're doing something to me. They had a machine that actually physically came and removed my eye. And when they pulled the eye out, I noticed that there was something coming to where my eye had been into the socket. This big, long needle, they put it into the eye socket, did something. The next thing I recall after seeing my eye get removed was just being back in my room. The whole time I'm coming out of whatever they do to me, I would remember bits and pieces. I scrambled to my journal and I wrote down what I remembered. I don't usually even look at my journal because it does tend to bring back a lot of the fear and the emotions, and it, you know, sometimes it's meant to be forgotten for good reason. Years later, I've started to have physical problems from it and actually had to, you know, undergo various surgeries because of unexplained scarring in my um, tubes and ovaries and, and uterus. There was just, you know, the doctors didn't know what it was from. There was just scarring in there. I never told the doctors uh, what I knew it was from. It's not something that you can say, all right, hey doc, you know, this is what's going on, especially back then. I had this time in my life where it just kept happening and happening and happening, and it really picked up for a couple years. This encounter uh, started as it always does. When I woke up, there was there was a, one of the grays standing at the foot of my bed, and I saw him there, and then just blacked out completely. As I wake up this time after I blacked out, I was in a strange, strange place. I, I realized that I was in a, a cocoon surrounded in gel. I looked through the gel and the cocoon. I'm looking out in, into the room, and I noticed that there's, there's some grays in there. And I couldn't tell exactly what they were doing, but I was distracted by a, a small girl. Um, looked like a small child but it was what appeared to be a hybrid of a human and a gray alien. She was really strange. She wasn't dressed in, in the same clothes that grays wear. She was dressed like it was um, old-fashioned clothes, maybe 1800s. It was confusing. It was almost, you know, surreal. As I was looking at her, she looked at me, and I felt almost like a kind of connection with this child. And, she uh, came right up to me. It was a, not just an interest, it was a, a connection, like a deep connection, and, and I felt a familiarity with her. One of the grays realized I was awake, hurried over to me, and I remember seeing a needle coming at me and, and right through the cocoon. And uh, then I just blacked out. And she's just always had a, a place in my heart, I guess, for, you know, from the experiences. I always remember that, that child. It's, it's like they're preparing us for something that's going to happen in the future um, to mankind. It's a, it's a preparation of sort. Um, there's areas of the brain that we all know we don't use. Um, they could be storing the information there. They said that uh, you know, when the time comes, we will act and know exactly what to do. Um, whatever's going to happen, I think that 
As abductees, we're being prepared to assist others with whatever changes is coming to this planet. I try sometimes to say, okay, this is all in my head, and, and I continue, and then something will happen that reminds me that it's very real. I've had times where I just step back and say, okay, I'm gonna just you know, join the human race and just do normal things, and this is not happening to me, but they won't let me. Can't say that I, I would have chosen this if, if I had, you know, had a choice, but uh, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm going through this and it's not my imagination. I've, I've had a lot of time to, to think about what they did and, and how angry I was, but if they were really going to do it to hurt me, then why would they take the memories away? Why would they care? You know, why would they care? They would just let me remember. Most skeptics and people that don't believe are probably the ones that believe the most. And they are so scared of it that they have to put it out there that it's not happening. But when they look up in, you know, in space at night, I think they really know that there's not a chance that we're the only species here on, in this universe. And I know that the you know, population of people are being able to start talking about it. It's, it's like there's a worldwide awakening happening right now. If you don't believe now, then just wait a little while because the proof is coming. and happening and it really picked up for a couple years I started to live in denial that it was even happening I said you know I'm, I want to see I looked up and I, they started to lift me towards this just enormous craft it was terrifying and they're doing something to me it's not something that's in my head at all it's, it's real it's happening From this what you will this does happen to me it has been happening to me all my life and you don't have to believe because i know the truth memories of being abducted by aliens were when I was very young, five, six years old. I was living in, in Ohio, and it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. Our nearest neighbor was a mile or two away. There was, you know, nothing for miles. I would be in my bed, usually. I would hear voices coming down the hallway. The voices were of my parents, so I got comfortable thinking it was my parents. I remember seeing a bright blue light come under the door and shadows, actually, of something standing outside the door. And I realized that it was not my parents coming in. When they got close, I'd see those black almond-shaped eyes just staring right at me. Emotionless eyes just looking at me and they would extend their hand and I would grab it as if I was really comfortable with them and had done this many times before. And uh, they often would let me take my favorite stuffed animal with me. 